Hopefully we'll get there. This is Michigan. Um, I'd like to ask everybody to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a brief invocation. Father, we ask that you be with us and guide us as we conduct the business of this village. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you. <coughs> Do we have a roll call for attendance of the council, please? President McDonald? Here. Mrs. Sotheby? Here. Mrs. Arendale? Here. Mrs. Swack? Here. Mr. Kennedy? Here. Note for the record that both Clerk Cindy Groskopf and Treasurer Judy Verse are present. Council has before it minutes of the April 8th regular meeting. Are there any questions, changes, or corrections? If none, a motion to approve the minutes would be in order. I so move. Are there any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. Okay. Council has before it a proposed agenda. Are there any additions? I'd like to add two things. Yes. Under new business, uh, newsletter and recycle. Okay. Um, can we also add regarding to recycle um, the garbage to that for minor? As far as problems or? Yeah. Okay. We'll do it then. Sure. Whatever. Okay. Are there any other changes or corrections? If none, a motion to approve the agenda as amended would be in order. I'll second that. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of approving the agenda as amended, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. Okay. Council has before it the treasurer's report for the month of April. Are there any questions, changes, corrections? If none, a motion to receive and file the treasurer's report would be in order. Are there any questions on the motion? Hearing none, could we have a roll call for uh, receiving the re treasurer's report? Mrs. Swack? Yes. Mrs. Sotheby? Yes. President McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Arendale? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Okay, moving on to accounts payable. Council has before it the accounts payable for the month of April. Are there any questions, corrections? If none, a motion to pay the bills in the amounts indicated would be in order. I make a motion that we pay the bills in the amount of $6,019.23 to the general fund. $1,881.11 to the major fund and zero to the other two funds. I second that. Are there any questions on the motion for paying the bills? Hearing none, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Kennedy? Yes. President McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Arendale? Yes. Mrs. Sotheby? Yes. Mrs. Swag? Yes. Okay. Now is an opportunity for the public to address the village council. We ask that you be brief and to the point and also be aware that if you are here for a matter that is on the agenda under new or old business, uh, you will have an opportunity to speak to it at that time. Anybody care to address the council? Yes, Mr. Johnson. Obviously we've had a lot of rain this year and it's been kind of pretty bad. I was trying to <clears throat> kind of, there's a trail I got or a drain from what I was aware of on the southwest corner of the Pollyanna Trail running down there. 
Ties into what Dash does across, across pass. I know I think it was Clark Drain, maybe they called it. It would be on that side if it is yeah, the county drain. I guess from what I understand, it across the trail there. Like, yes, the trail. It, <clears throat> everything's been so overgrown over the years and stuff. What are the, maybe the odds, I can't, to get that dug back out or something so it's more drainage for our backyards, I guess. Because it's affecting a lot, you know, <clears throat> quite a few of us, I would say. Yeah, it may not be possible to get it now due to the due to the conditions, but I'll have uh, our DPW first we'll figure out what it is, whether it's a local drain or a county drain, and address it that way. If it's a county drain, the county should be notified. If it's not, then right. we, we can take we'll have to get permission from the trail, but we'll have to take a look at it first. Yes, I think it would I think it would help a lot for a lot of us around there. Yes. This, this year is obviously been terrible. You know, my backyard is under a lake and I got a drain. I dug that ditch all the way back down as far as I could by hand, but, you know, I see something I can clean it out. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Is, is that uh, north south drain on the agenda that you cleaned out or whatever it is there? I know there were flags on, on Forest Street. It goes all the way from town down to the point of It's our storm drain. I'm not aware of any activities back there. Are you talking the about the county drain? No, no, the one right on Forest Street. The one that we replaced five years ago, six years ago? Yeah, there, there's a big dip there. There's been a dip ever since. Right after they that catch basin, there's been a dip there ever since they put that pipe in. And I, I looked at the catch basin, and those pipes are full of silt. I, I counted, I watched a bug, a bug went from the north side to the south side. It took like two minutes for it to flow. That's how slow the flow is. It, it's not moving. I know there were flags out there. I don't know if that was for AT&T or who that was flags before. Yeah, I don't know. Because it's, it's, it's bad. I'll uh, ask The water uh, is above the entire crop. Okay. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we'll move on then. Um, at this time, we're going to discuss the reallocation of community development block grant funds. Um, we currently have funds that are more than three years old and we have to either reallocate them or end or other funds or we'll lose that money. Uh, it would go uh, back to the county. So, Cindy, would you like to explain the process here? No. So all discussion has to take place before we close the meeting and during the public hearing, if anybody wants to speak, they need to stand up acknowledge who they are and then make their comment, but no discussion can take place at that time. And we've been doing it differently for the last 25 years, so I've been informed to let everybody know the process, have the conversations before and then close it. And then let people speak if they have anything to say. So we do have $3,947.93 from 2016 that we're looking to do something with. There's a 947 left in minor home repair and 3,000 in youth, assist, youth services. We do not have any low to mod area wide in the village of Leonard, so it's very difficult for us to do anything. It has to be income qualified. Um, youth assistance is the same thing, so we could use it for anybody in Addison Township or Oxford or Leonard, but they still have to qualify with income. So we haven't been able to spend that money. Um, I did talk to the county and we could look at doing ADA picnic tables at the park or ADA playground equipment, maybe a fountain, um, but we would need to put a project together. So we need to have the planner come out here and actually sit down and look at it and see what our options are. Uh, we can do curbage, we could do ADA pathways, but again, we need to plan it and put a project together. What they're suggesting that we do, there is um, a lady in Addison Township that's right outside the village limits, and Purdy Nielsen, she's at 871 East Leonard Road. She has applied for the, the home repair program 
to get her basement water proofed, a new front door, a new back door, uh, rebuild the front porch, and a new furnace. So if we wanted to transfer this money back to the county, they would put that money towards that project to offset the loan that they would have to take out for that work. So they're suggesting that we do that, and then they're suggesting that we can start conversations with the planner on some of the other activities that we want to do for future years or for like 2017, 18, 19 money. Okay. Um, I would just also inform everyone that several years ago, Addison Township helped us uh, work on a home here in the village. They transferred their money to us for a new roof for one of our residents. So it wouldn't be extraordinary for us to do that. Uh, kind of turnabout is fair play. Um, but it's up to the council. And are there any questions from you now? You'll have a chance to discuss it now and then when we go into the public hearing, then if you want to go on record, that's when you would make your comments that would be permanently in the record. So right now it's informational. Are there any questions I can answer? Or Cindy? And they said the town, because I asked if the township had minor home repair money to, to help the family too, but they said the township gave theirs all to OSHA for the mobile homes. And they asked if we had any, but we, we don't, so. There's a bunch of different guidelines I'd have to get from them. The path, pathway construction is generally minimum of five feet in width. Okay. And we can't build new pathways with Black Grant money, can we? That was my ADA understanding. ADA pathways, they said we could look at. So we could. What are ADA? A Handicap. Handicap yeah, accessible. Disability. Yeah. Okay, but. I mean, what what's makes different it's from not a, a sidewalk it's a pathway and it has to be the removal architect or barrier thing you're removing okay. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe like okay and and we could okay so senior center we could put money at the senior center but they just did a new senior center so he didn't think they would need any money um the fire department the only thing we could do was uh aeds purchasing AADs, but they already have two and they don't need any more. Um, but again, it's very limited what we can do because we do not have low mod areas right. defined. And they said we might even be able to do like a water fountain at the park. But again, we need to have a whole plan together. Right. I think it would be nice if we had a um, ADA compliant play structure of some sort whether it be at the park or on the trail or adjacent to the trail, trailhead. He, no? Yeah, but it, he was kind of not sure if we could do it because it's supposed to be removing something, not adding a new. But oh, I see. He said we could discuss it. Um, and I asked about the trailhead too. So that's why we'd need the planner to come out here and actually look at what we have and figure out different so we need like Big a recreation that plan that this would be a piece of is, is am i understanding that we would need a plan um and he wanted to know if we had a, do we have an address at the park do you no, know we don't we use the plat number but it was it was set up through the right process to actually be considered a park right yeah it's zoned and okay yeah okay okay any other points questions Okay, well, let's go into closed session then. And, and the closed section, session is only for the, the audience, not the council, to make comment. So if anybody wants to go on record saying anything, and then we'll close that, go back to regular, and then later we'll make the decision on how we're going to allocate the money. I make a motion that we close the regular meeting. All in favor of the motion to close the regular meeting and go into the public comment period for the community development block grant reallocation of funds. Please, I guess we do a roll call, I think. President no. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Southery? Yes. Mrs. Arendale? Yes. Mrs. Swack? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Okay. Okay, at this time, 
would any resident or member of the audience care to address the council on their preferences for the use of the available block grant funding in the amount of $3,947.93. No, my understanding is is that we can't we can't make geograph we can't make improvements related to public use per se. They have to be dedicated towards a segment like handicapped or universal access. I have a question. Um, what is the decision have to be made? I'm not quite sure everyone's understanding what you're trying yeah. to do with that. Well, we've talked about it at a, at a few meetings. We're trying not to lose the money. If we can find a use for it locally, <laughs> then we'd like to do that. But if we let it go back to the county by not giving it a purpose tonight, then they have indicated that they would use it for a local Addison Township resident to help with their needs. And as I said, that's kind of what the, the township did for us at one point as well. A certain amount is allocated each year and you have so many years to use the allocation. And this 3000 will go you away. Can't discuss it now. I can't talk. Nobody's supposed to have any oh, discussion. Sorry, You're only right. supposed to stand up, We're, say your name, and okay. what do you want sorry. to do? You try, okay, you try. Now answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> no. That, that money will go away. That doesn't mean the rest of the money that's out there will go away. You'll still have a decision on the inter, in the other years. But this 3000 a decision has to be made soon. And unfortunately, it has to be made tonight because otherwise the county is just going to take it back because we haven't met. Well, if we haven't used it, let them utilize it. For the record. <laughs> but that, um, I mean, what, are, what are our list of options, I guess? I mean, you, that, that's what Cindy just described. Mrs. Rowe? I have to go and back to the fire department. I'm just shocked that that's the only thing. Is that the only thing we can do with it for that? Because we don't have low mod. Be, they would have to track every single one of their runs, and then they'd have to income qualify people. And I mean, about nine years ago, <laughs> we had um, some money through CDBG through the um, uh, township, and it was uh, for an extractor. And um, the amount of paperwork and time it took me to do and take care of that, I mean, sure, it was still, I think it was about five or $6,000. Um, you know, some paperwork wasn't that big of a deal. But trying to get the county people in line with what we were doing, and then the low to mod is what she's talking about, is income area that they designate at the county level. And that's where they want that money spent. So they wanted that money spent for the township of Addison. It was like from Frick Road North, right? And they had to show, and that's our station one. So I had to show run volume and all this other data that I made up for station one. Luckily, we have our stations divided. So we never had that, that tracked before. So it was months and months and months of stuff to do. It's very hard to find a project to allocate this money for. And I guess the best thing is, is old people and, and home repairs and things like that and their, um, their issues, uh, that money is easy to go there and it does help with the residents. Okay. Thank Sorry. you. That was a lovely explanation. I, I tried, but it was very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna break uh, the rule here too. I have, I have some, so I have why some. Make it? Just to give you but some perspective, <laughs> um, statewide, the percentage of jurisdictions reporting high economic hardship, to about 28% of all the cities, townships, and villages say they have high economic hardship. <clears throat> Southeast Lower Peninsula, our area, so to speak, it's reported at 20%. In Oakland County, it's at 12 So we do have trouble finding good good uses <coughs> for the people that need it. And if the people that need it, it can't be a general use like building a drain or building a road or whatever or sidewalks. It has to be something 
that directly benefits them and their home. The public. Yeah. So. Okay, so we have two comments for the record. No, we <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, well, she went on record. She didn't give her name. What's your name? Amber. <laughs> So Amber Becker is stating, use it for the Addison Township folks, that the she home repair? Yes, if you're not utilizing it, give it back to them. Okay. So okay. Amber that's Becker. Anybody no else have a comment for the record? Which took us I would say 10 minutes to get I'll one comment. I'll say use it for them too. I would go on record and say, just can't use it for the fire department or something else. Okay. Okay, if there's no further comment, then I'm going to close the uh, public uh, public <laughs> close the public comment period and ask for a motion to reopen the regular meeting. I make a motion we close the public hearing and reopen the regular meeting. I second that motion. Roll call, please. That was tough. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy. Yes. Mrs. Swack. Yes. Mrs. Arendale. Yes. President McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Sotheby? Yes. It, it seems kind of redundant to take a roll, but <coughs> because we're handling money mm -hmm. the, and the trustees are directly responsible for, the, for being the watchdogs for that, that's why we do the roll call on money. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Okay, so under new business, um, we can have a change of pace. Uh, I'd like to wel welcome and have it, our residents welcome uh, Fire Chief Jerry Morosky and Addison Township Trustee Eric Semp. They're here to talk to us about um, communication and fire board and how, how we all work together. So, gentlemen, which? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. Sure. Where do you want me to be, up here? Wherever you like, Eric. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to address you uh, on this topic. Uh, and talking about the township, talking about the fire board, I'll give you a quick rundown of myself. Uh, I retired in 2006. Uh, 2007, Dan Old which you all know, our, our ex treasurer, uh, is my neighbor. And he said, You got way too much time on your hands. You need to be involved in the township. So I was uh, appointed to the fire board in 2007. Uh, in 2009, I started chairing the fire board and got very familiar with the operation at that time uh, because we had a change in leadership, different chiefs, as you probably remember. And uh, we, we went through the selection process. Also, I did a deep dive into the department that, so I understood how it worked. So I knew you know, what, what I was getting into. So I was on that until 2000, uh, worked very close with Jerry, getting the fire department, let's say a couple, quite a few notches higher. Uh, until 2014, 2014, <clears throat> after seven years on the fire board, uh, I was asked to join, um, the, the board trustee, one of the trustees, John uh, uh, Sutphin, uh, uh, got ill. And I was appointed for two years as a trustee. And then in 16, I ran again. And I'm still under as trustee. But my point is, I got very familiar with the fire department process. Uh, the fire board, I heard a lot about the history, you know, what it used to be. And, and I got to see it firsthand and ran it all these years extremely smooth uh, to the point where uh, even my my uh, my replacement when I left in, in 2016 <coughs> Mark Smith the chairman of it now he and I agreed that you know it might be time to sunset that operation because the way the relationship works between the fire department the fire board and and, and the trustees board or the, uh, the township board uh, it's repetitive. A lot of things that a lot of things that we approve on the township board, as far as the budget over the years, the present administration in the fire department is doing a great job running. 
So we sometimes, well, we, well, a lot of times we have fire board meetings for the sake of having a meeting, and that's something I never really cared for that much. Uh, but anyway, so one of the things we want to bring out tonight is it might be time to sunset that activity. The relationship we have with Leonard, I think, is, is great. I mean, Station 1 is closer to you guys than any, anybody else in the township. Uh, we have representation you know, on the fire board. I worked with Gino all those years. Um, and, you know, so Jerry's going to give a little more detail. We put a lot of thought into this. We, we I say Mark Smith, Jerry, myself, uh, put a lot of thought into put a step-by-step -step pl uh, plan together as to how this would run once the fire board would no longer exist. So everybody's covered, including Leonard. I mean, this covers everyone. Where the, the process would go into the board, into the township board, and we would go through the process of doing administrative type approval. Things that used to go to the fire board, for example, uh, state, statement of work that the fire department uses. It was nice to hear on the fire board, but I had no clue what that meant. You know, how to go from Pumper 1 to Pumper 2 and all the technical stuff. It all had to be spelled out, but that's something we never really understood to approve. Now, this would be in the fire department with the officers that know the process and they would approve that. So we got everything covered. I guess that's my main point. So having said all that, again, it was nice talking with you. <clears throat> Hopefully we get to talk again. And I'll let Jerry get some more uh, detail on this. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. So real quickly, there were some issues about the uh, fire board that brought up um, last summer, and they had said, you know, the uh, chairman and, and a couple other people were talking on the fire board and, and said, you know, are we really needing this, the fire board now? Um, where the bylaws state that we had to meet six times a year. We, we didn't meet um, that a couple times because of um, not a quorum. Uh, there's was some issues. There's one fire board member on there that doesn't uh, doesn't uh, come or participate in the meetings. Um, but there, it's like Eric had said, it's a lot of repetitive motions, right? In there, um, back in the day when the fire board, the, the fire department started, the fire board was a liaison board to the township board and the village. And um, back then, when it was you know a volunteer, and, and, and I, I guess the way I see it was because I lived from that time 25 years ago was more or less the administration of the fire department back then, the overseer of everything we did on um, a day-to-day -day basis. Now that we're you know six full-time people, um, the fire department is is managed well with the support of the community. Um, I always want to make sure we say that. Uh, the community supports us um, and we give that uh, back to our community. I don't think there is really a need for the fire board. Um, if if you, the uh, residents so see, desire the fire board, I don't have a problem going forward with it. Um, I do think that the fire board has outlived its time, um, unfortunately. Um, if there is another issue that comes up, um, I left a building to be built or something like that, I'm sure that the township would uh, create an ad hoc committee or some kind of committee and have a representative from the village um, on that um, board. And if the fire board did have to be uh, reenacted, so to speak, I, you know, they would still have that representation of a person from Leonard on that board. So um, any questions without me rambling on, without... Um... Chief, uh, Eric, do you, if, if the village were to send a letter to the township stating a couple of the conditions you've indicated, that being that in the event there was a recreation of the fire board or an issue that might have community-wide implications and the village would like to have representation, um, do you sense that there'd be any problem with that? Having no. it in writing? That no, because in some of our notes here, um, what we were going to do, because the only thing I was worried about was um, checks and balances on the fire department. If Even if I am chief here, I would still be a resident here, right? I wanted to make sure that there's still checks and balances. The fire board really doesn't do that now. Um, there is a little bit, they approve our SOGs, 
Um, the previous chief used to just change them at will. I always wanted some accountability, right? Um, there should be like, uh, I started in the annual report that I give out um, now. And it, it just all those activities needed to have a checks and balance. And that's what we put together. So those SOGs now will, um, one thought is that the fire um, officers would have a, um, a majority vote. And then we all vote those in as a majority, not um, just a chief at will writing something that they wanted to change. That was my big concern when I took over, um, was having that checks and balances in there. Um, and being accountable, uh, an annual report, disseminating some of that information to the township board in the village has to happen. Just because the fire board isn't there doesn't mean that we just give off all our reports and we walk away and we spend money and, and I didn't want that. There's got to be some, um, again, checks and balance, I said it, but, and that's what we're putting forward. So just so the village knows that that is happening and there is there has been lots of talk about if the, if the fire board had to come back or there was an, a, a committee that had to uh, form for some issue on the fire department that the village would already be included. And I've had that in my correspondence back and forth with the township. Right, and, and that correspondence that he's uh, alluding to, you know, that, that's been reviewed by us on the board, members of the board. And yeah, to answer your question, there'll be no problem whatsoever. There would always be representation of letters on, on anything going forward, if required. We appreciate the communication you've given us in the last little bit. That is the only communication we have had from the fire board in a number of years. If I would have known that, I would probably have made an appearance long ago. It's not anything worth yeah. getting upset over because it's already over with. I'm just saying we appreciate the communication. Yeah, I would, the only thing I would throw out, I thought that was happening, being that we had representation on the fire board. No. So I thought <coughs> it never, you know, should never have seen it, right? So I'll take some of the blame not showing up there as a chairman. Well, we didn't complain either, so. Okay. But anyway, we're here. Okay. And, and I want to say that the chief and the other members of the department have been very forthcoming and cooperative. The chief hand delivers the annual, uh, his annual budget. He's done it every year since I've been here. Um, so. The budget and the annual report. Yes. Right. The right. annual report we just started three years ago to start third year. And each year it gets a little better, a little more information. <laughs> Who's saying? <laughs> <laughs> no. The but, only thing I would say to kind of that supplement that is we're very fortunate, very fortunate that the, the the type of fire department we have up in this area. One of the things when I got involved with this 2007, I did a, you know, I talked to Pete Schultz and I talked to Rochester, the chief uh, C Slab, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I looked, you know, because I wanted to get informed, and then uh, that's, that's when you realize the shortcomings, and of course, now I see where we're really leading the pack where a lot of the chiefs will come out here. And See what are you guys doing? Uh, for, for a lot of our water operations. But I also have, um, we're updating a master plan as well. We call it that, I'm probably gonna call it something else. Um, we've, um, it was it's seven years old. Um, I do have that document as well that really explains everything we're doing in the fire department in each department. Um, and that will be coming out here in, that, in this summer. Um, and I'll make sure that everybody on the board gets that as well. And for the residents, it'll be uh, posted on our, uh, our Facebook page and our um, uh, township web page. Do you know where the fire board originally met? Here. No. In the building next door, oh, in the front. Yeah, the it was Leonard, but it was in front of the old post office. That's where they met. And they, and they tied the horses up, right? Yes, up. they did. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. On behalf of the board, thank you. Um, does anybody on the council have any questions for the chief or Mr. Trustee yeah, Trexon? Do you have anything in writing that kind of lists out what your plan moving forward is for the dissolution? I mean, you've talked a lot about we want to do this, we want to do this, but do you have in writing anywhere that we could do um, Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. And that was, uh, again, at the third board um, meeting when they actually um, dissolved. 
or voted to dissolve the fire board. Um, I have those uh, papers here if you wanted to read those afterwards. I'll be sure. willing to share those with you. I, I believe I received those as well. And I thought I, I think I did just send them out, but it was so long ago. Yeah, quite a few months ago, actually. So, thank you. Uh, if you, if we don't do it tonight, if you can send them to me tomorrow, and I'll send them out to the. I, I will do that. that I'd, appre better. I'd appreciate that. So everybody gets a copy. Are you okay with that, Alex? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? All right. All set. Thank you again for attending. Council, is there anything you wish to? do it this time or you want to wait for the information I'd like to suggest that we um, receive the information from the chief and then I will take it upon myself to draft a letter in conjunction with the township board and the fire department to establish our our involvement and future communication uh, pathways and then perhaps at the next meeting, if, if we have that all tied up, we can take a look at it and vote on it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, motion to table this item to the June meeting. Uh, Absolutely. I'd like to make a motion to table the decision for the dissolution of the fire board until our June meeting. Is there no, a second? Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to table this matter until the June meeting, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Okay. Thank you again for attending. Thank you. Okay, we've, we've had the uh, public hearing on the block grant monies. Uh, council, what are your wishes? Is that a motion? I'd like to motion that. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay, so the motion is to return the $3,947.93 uh, back to the township for their use to help a resident in Addison Township. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Can we have a roll call on that then, please? Mr. Kennedy? Yes. President McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Sotheby? Yes. Mrs. Arendale? Yes. Mrs. Swack? Yes. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we've been asked by Oakland County to, good evening, to consider celebrating the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment of the United States Constitution, giving women the right to vote. I'm not sure we had the right to give it. Men had the right to give it to women, but we, that's the way they did it. So if we adopt a resolution um, to celebrate that anniversary, we will receive a flag that will be flown on specific dates um, June 10th through June 14th of this year and also in 2020 to commemorate the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. Not to mention celebrate the fact that women got the right to vote. <laughs> so um, I'd like to ask the council how they would like to proceed. We don't have to do this but it seems like a community-oriented activity, and uh, it is, it's a genuine something to celebrate. I mean, really, where would we be without, without it? He's outnumbered right now. You're yeah. outnumbered right now. So. Okay. Right now. <laughs> well, I don't hear a motion. <laughs> All right. I motion to adopt the, uh, what are we adopting here? The resolution. Yeah, the resolution yeah. for the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. I'd like to second that motion. Okay, are there any other que any questions on the motion? Hearing none, <coughs> I'm unfit over the motion to adopt the resolution celebrating women's voting rights. Please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Crickets. 
<laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> okay. Okay, the next item on the agenda is Council Committee appointments for the Planning Commission. Unfortunately, uh, we've suffered a couple of losses on the committee, and uh, we're going to have to find some replacements. So I'd like to recommend to the Council that we take applications from any interested resident, and hopefully at our June meeting, or prior to our June meeting, I'll have a list for your consideration for residents. And we, if you're interested, it doesn't pay much, but you sure learn a lot about the community and you really help, help the community grow in the right directions. Uh, Phyllis Rowe was chairperson for a number of years and she knows exactly what I'm talking about. And our current chair, Leslie McKenna, has been just Great. Yeah, awesome I mean, it's job. just been a great, great experience. I've been very fortunate uh, to be able to work with both of them. So, um, hey, Leslie, do you want to write something out and I'll put it out in the box outside so that people maybe would read it? And oh, you mean, okay, I can do that. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. So there's really no action needed on this unless, unless somebody's got another I idea. See, I Okay, the next item to come before the council is uh, consideration of sidewalk code amendments. Currently, the village does not have, uh, our only code enforcement for sidewalks is, um, well, I'll just read it here. Uh, although the state law permits regulation of um, sidewalk uh, of regulation of sidewalks there is no current ordinance authority in our books to require property owners to repair or maintain sidewalks beyond snow removal so in the past the village built sidewalks using block grant money and I'm not sure I'm sure prior to block grant they were probably building sidewalks as well however it was always done by the village um, now we can consider um, state law provides for the construction, maintenance, expenses, and allocation in that, uh, and I'll quote it here, the council shall have control of all sidewalks in the public streets and alleys of the village and may prescribe or change the grade of the sidewalks when considered necessary. They may build, maintain, and keep in repair sidewalks and crosswalks in the public streets and alleys and charge the expense of constructing and maintaining the sidewalks upon the lots and premises adjacent to and abutting the walks. So in other words, if we adopt this and there's a need to repair a sidewalk, we don't have the block grant money anymore for that use. So we would likely, what I envision is we would hire a contractor, determine the areas of sidewalks that need to be repaired or replaced and then we would push that cost back um, onto the residents, which sounds, that's a pretty bold move, but it has to be done anyway. And if we can get it done, um, if, the, if the homeowner doesn't want to do it themselves, then we can get it done. Because frankly, we can't afford to do that much work on our own with our, with our budget. So, um, Mike, is that on the, like if you replaced the broken sidewalk in front of Yvonne's house, it's really bad. Right. That would go on to her, or would it be split amongst the whole village? I, it's, it specifically says, Adjacent. well, you know what, I'd have to find out, Phyllis. Yeah, because if it's, you know, we all use that sidewalk. Yeah. I, yeah, I would, that's a fine point. I, I uh, The, uh, let's see, the, the village, the council made by a two-thirds vote of the members pay such part of the expense of building or rebuilding a sidewalk as they may consider proper from the general street fund or from the street district fund of any street district in which a sidewalk is located. So it doesn't really address that specifically, but I, will, I can find that out. Tonight, 
I wanted to get this because we had discussed sidewalks so much and trying to get something done. Um, what we would have to do is amend our ordinances to establish standards for repair and maintenance of existing sidewalks, making it the responsibility of property owners to bear the costs associated with the required repairs, which is pretty much the standard everywhere. It's not many communities anymore that do it on their own. Um, this can be done by requiring each property owner to undertake necessary repairs themselves or to bring the sidewalk into compliance to, to bring the sidewalk into compliance or by establishing a village program to do this with a single contractor at the expense of the property owner and as I indicated or the village council can vote. So, so you're saying I could repair my own sidewalk? Oh, absolutely. To a certain standard. Huh? Right. It has to do to It would have to be to right. standard. Right. It would yeah. have to be the code. Yeah, absolutely. But you're saying if I don't do it, you're going to do it, and then I have to pay for having it done. It says this can be done by requiring each property owner, which I've checked, and I think Jennifer's checked, the too. The city of East Point came through. Um, I have two properties in East Point. Um, they came through. They marked them. They said, this is what we're going to repair. They said, you have an option. You can go get a permit, and you can do it yourself, or we'll do it. Um, it was much cheaper for them to do it, and then it, it's all to code. It's all done. It gets done at the same time, and they sent me a bill. Um, that's East Point. That's in a big city. Have you checked around this area? What yeah. is Dryden do? What does Oxford do? The Oxford fights a lot and doesn't get much done, but they, their, their requirements are the same as this. Yeah. Um, I just live in Boston. Are you going through and all these sidewalks that people have been complaining about, like Mr. Malaya over here, that mm -hmm. the sidewalks totally raised up over there? Mm -hmm. um, I think that I think that whole side of the street's going to need to right. be redone. Right, but it's been like this for years and years and yeah. years and years, and they've been complaining That's for water. years and years. Yvonne has too. Right. Now it's going to now you're going to come through and mark those and make them do it. If if that's what people want. See, I don't, uh, that kind of bothers me because they've been yeah. complaining for years to yeah. the village about well, how dangerous these are. Other repairs have been affected over the years, Phyllis. I mean, you've seen right. sidewalks being, being taken up. Um, oh, yeah. Or, and, and or it's like paved, across the street from me paved in front over. of uh, Frost yeah. House. That whole yeah. sidewalk is blacktop. Right. And it floods yeah. terribly. Yeah. You know, are you going to make curbs? Pay for that? She doesn't even live there. Well, there is an option. It says a village-wide special assessment district could be established to undertake a village-wide repair program. See, that's what I, I'm just with, wondering. With costs. People that have been complaining about these sidewalks and how dangerous they are. Well, for Phyllis, years and years. The, the village council doesn't have the money. The money right. to do it, unless you want to increase taxes. Mm -hmm. This is this is in effect a tax. Right. But it's to re to give a direct service. It's mm -hmm. not like you're giving money to the general fund and we get to say, okay, we can spend it here or wherever. It's going to be used for one purpose only. And you know as as well or better than I do how much complaint how many complaints there are about sidewalks. And we've tried to do them mm -hmm. with block grant money until until the money was ran out. Right. So. What alternative do we have? We don't have $20,000, $40,000, whatever it would cost to fix all of the sidewalks or put in new ones. So we don't have to do it all at once. We, we need to fix the bad spots and mm -hmm. get it done. And, and that's what I'm just thinking, because I know Yvonne doesn't have enough money to pay you know, for her sidewalks. Um, I mean, is well, she going to have to pay for it up front, or are we going to have to, like, added onto our taxes and like increments or something. Well, as I said, I'll have to speak to legal counsel and find out if we can spread the cost that way or if it has to, the, the amount of benefit, usually with special assessments, the amount of benefit that a resident receives is what they pay for. 
they pay for just their portion of it. Because really, truthfully, there's not very many sidewalks in this whole village sure. that are good, except for the one that goes by the Tommy and the trail. Yeah. 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 And the one up by Toby, that section oh. up there is new. Because they're yeah, all new. Yeah, so is the one down here by the fire. Oh, right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Some of the worst conditions you have right here are caused by tree roots. Yes. And there's absolutely no way to remedy it without killing the tree. Right. The one in front of Malaya's, that's the problem, the tree root. Because we have replaced that sidewalk. Yeah. And the tree root keeps popping the, the sidewalk up. I think that if you're going to do something that the villagers need to be notified so they can have something to say. Because I do believe that people who have lived here forever are going to say, we've never had to pay for this before. Right. Why now? Yeah, I think this okay. needs to be publicized or something because I know, I mean, I know a lot of people that are going to be really upset about having to do that. That, uh, well, we're talking, it looks like item number six is a newsletter. Maybe, mm -hmm. would that be a good forum to do it or? Well, that's what I wanted know. to bring up to you. I was in Lake Orion Saturday at something and I noticed this really attractive news thing at the little library and I talked with the girl and she said, this is the last one we're going to do like this. She said, we are combining Orion Township, the Village of Orion, Fire Department. We're all going together. When we have a newsletter, we all go together so we share the expense. And she didn't indicate how many times a year they do that, but it does make sense to me because I have Addison Township's newsletter. Um, why not? You, you, the library puts out a newsletter. We occasionally do. The township. Fire department, if you, if one of you each paid for a quarter, you'd basically have it paid for, and it really wouldn't be that expensive, and everybody'd have the information. <coughs> Just a thought. That's why I brought it up. Yes. Well, we'll discuss it at that time, but my my point was to the fact: would that be a, f a good enough forum to let people know? I and, agree. And I, I honestly think that that's money well spent. It's not like we send out a quarterly newsletter we do no. we do it when the need is there for a, a topic or a subject like this so yeah it's not going to happen overnight unfortunately I mean yeah. that means the repairs aren't going to happen overnight but that could even be distributed in a, in a letter you know that we hand out if you wanted to say yeah. money I don't well, care the, yeah, the uh, we could get a lot more information in people's hands, though, because there's talk about recycling, what what people should be doing and what yep. they shouldn't be doing. That mm -hmm. seems to be need to be addressed now too. So it's more cost effective to do a newsletter than it is just a a letter about yeah. the one subject. Mm -hmm. So, but I'll defer to the council. However, we want to deal with that. Okay. So I guess at this time, I'd like to. It looks like I have to do some homework with the village attorney, but the question before the council is, do you want me to do that? It, to proceed to find out about how, what the, what the financial uh, fine points are? Yeah, I think for us to make an important decision, we'll need to have that information. Okay. And there's clearly a need. Okay. Before you even put a newsletter out there, we have yes. to have that information. Okay. okay, so I will do that then. Okay, speaking of newsletters, you're up. So, I, I think it's a good idea, but I'm just presenting it, and I have no idea whether Addison Township, Fire Department, Library, any of them would agree. But I mean, we have our parks, they have parks, and a lot of times, if you don't go and check the websites, you don't have all the information. And I just think a newsletter that everybody in Addison Township would receive covering all these entities would be a good idea. And I'm willing to talk with Pauline or whoever, if you want, or the library. And if you don't want, that's OK. I just a suggestion. I think the last newsletter we did, the printing cost was $130. Mm -hmm. $130 for the newsletter, which is 11 by 17 folded in half, you know, mm -hmm. four pages. And the, the mailing was 
60 70 dollars so covering addison township would obviously cover more homes but again you have more people that are putting money into the pot to pay that 70. bill yeah so we spent 200 dollars in the village mm -hmm. for a newsletter that targeted our residents and you're going to have so, to pay for all the additional mm -hmm. residents. Mm -hmm. I know all the yeah, the residents yeah. that aren't in the villages that don't care about that, our villages. Right. Just a thought. I, yeah. I'm just saying that's what Lake Orion was doing, and Lake Orion has the same thing. They have village residents, township residents, and they thought it was a wise idea. I'm just bringing it. If people don't think it's a wise idea, well, it's okay by me. If, it, if there was a formula based on the number of the population or the or the people that are receiving mm -hmm. the uh, newsletter it might be worth looking at Char. well we have what approximately 140 homes within the village right i and we and we usually include the businesses too but how often do we print a newsletter usually three two well, three times a year not even that not we lately it's, it's been a year now it's been a year It is more of a smaller, usable village. We're not, though. Mm -hmm. We don't really have businesses and things to share. It's more or less for just us village residents to know what's going on around the village. Well, but I like to know what's going on in the township. And what I'm saying is a lot of times there's things going on in the township that we're not aware of. But does the township even put out a newsletter? I got one in the mail. They, um, okay. never they, 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 they started out about, about never four. Had a, never had a township newsletter. It includes the fire department, mm -hmm. uh, parks and recreation news, treasurer news, supervisor news. Did you, did you sign up for that? No, it came. I, I think what I, I think the reason that I got it is because I'm a senior citizen. <laughs> yes. And I also got an application to get an absentee ballot. Yes. But. Okay. That's. Uh, I, I still. I had an application to get an absentee ballot, but I didn't get a news. It was in your absentee ballot. No, I got it too, and that's what it was. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, yes, I get well, mine. Whatever. <laughs> the, I can tell you the methodology the township uses because they have sent newsletters along with the property tax bills mm -hmm. in the past. Oh, and they yes. they combined so they saved on the mailing, you know, not mailing to. Tax bills are coming out in June. Get going. <laughs> yeah. See, I so, just got this. It wasn't with a bill or anything yeah, else. Mortgage, you wouldn't get that. Yeah, it goes to the bank. Right. You have mortgage. But I don't have you a, a mortgage, and I didn't get this. I didn't get this with the tax bill. I just got this. No, we're talking about mailing them with the, the tax bill. Oh, I see. Excuse me. They don't get a copy of it. Everybody doesn't get a copy. No. It's not no. If it goes to the bank, they don't get a copy. Because the bank sends them all the information. You can if you want. Because my bank didn't pay eight dollars. Yeah, you could mine. pick them up too. Okay. So I'm getting a delinquent. That was just for it's information. All righty. Jennifer has an idea. We have at our businesses in the village, like Michelle Hope. Michelle Hope. Michelle. That would probably support funding half of that to share a flyer with you. We used to do that. When we first had a newsletter, the businesses paid for it. Yeah, there was one up on the wall here. There's a business up here. Well, we don't advertise, though. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it has a pen. I don't have the keys. Or it could be funded, even if it was 100 bucks. I'd pay 200 bucks to get it out to everybody. We can't hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just teasing. Go no, ahead. To get, the, to get the newsletter. No, we. Out, to be a fraction of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we could look for some sponsors mm -hmm. uh, to help offset the costs. You were discussing if we had sponsors to help pay for the newsletters to go out with local sponsors. Like insurance yeah. agencies or maybe real estate, people, real estate agents. You know, local around here. To local. help. Mm -hmm. Offset cost. Local mm people -hmm. here. Yes, village residents. Yeah. That we we haven't done that because it's been a public 
when we first did the newsletter, we did. Well, I was part of that, and we saw. Well, that was we got donations. Yes, yeah, sir. That was, <laughs> since I've been doing it, yeah. Since two thousand and eight, it's been just. Yeah. Just a little well, because yeah. then the other thing too, if you get donations from people around here to send that out, then are you? Because these people get bombarded by the festival committee, the decorating committee, the sewer committee, the what? Sewer committee. This, that yeah. Um, the PTO, you know, all these people right here in the village, are we taking away from them to send out a two hundred dollar oh. newsletter? You see what I'm saying? I, I've always felt for the village, it's the cost of doing business. Right. Yeah. That's I agree. that's. I agree. It was that's how I looked at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, I'm you know I'm open I'm just, for. I'm bringing that up because say because um, even Cooper Standard donated to the mill, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then, and Cooper Standard donates to the Strawberry Festival. They donate to the PTO. They they do a lot of donating. So if they now start donating to a two hundred dollar newsletter, are they going to cut a hundred dollars out of the uh, Strawberry Festival, the PTO, whatever? You know, it's just a thought. Well, we'll think about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will accept articles, etc. If anybody has anything related to the village point of view, Shar's contributed, Phyllis has contributed. Um, Leslie, you did too, didn't you? Give me an article for the Planning Commission a while back? Maybe I did. I think so. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I'll start putting one together. And uh, I've got an editorial team now. <laughs> so we'll go for it. Okay, <clears throat> that covers newsletter. Are you good with that, mm -hmm. Sharp? I am. How about uh, recycling and uh, Do you want to speak first or do you want me to? I don't have a problem either way. <clears throat> um, I guess, then I can go. Um, my question was brought up to me by some residents that regarding our garbage, it transferred over to is it G? G. 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 Yeah. Yeah. When were the residents notified of that? We weren't even notified mm -hmm. of it. Okay. Right. So is there a way for us to get out there and notify that? The next problem that we've had, at least in Leonard Estates, um, is that they're only picking up one garbage can, and then they were picking up no garbage cans because they were the blue ones that had the old company on it, then, That's the first I've heard. Cause then phone calls were made to them, and they said, well, it's because they're the blue cans. And we're like, well, everybody's got blue cans. Everybody's got blue cans. And so um, they then said, well, you need, you need at least a sticker on it. Why don't people call? Well, the residents should call the village. They should <laughs> call us and let us know when well, this happens. Well, my problem is I'm just out walking and I get hit. Yeah. So, um, and it's been GFL laughing. for a while. Why oh, is it's it been now? GFL right, almost two years, years now. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so that's not new. Yeah. So, but they quit picking up, and now they sent out um, stickers to put a sticker on it to cover up the old logo. Oh. And again, they only picked up one of the trash cans. We didn't get a sticker and they for us. Picked. So I'm, I'm just saying when you call there because. I Residents are trying to just call, make the call. Are they yeah. calling GFL? Yeah. They, that's not who's. Yeah, you contracted we, through. We contract through Sunrise Management. management. Right. They contracted out, not us. So um, oh. it should it should come to the village really, so that we know what's going on with. Okay, them. so you might want to. Oh, I, to your I, I I guarantee you one phone call and it'll be fixed. But you got to right. call the right person. Uh -huh. You know oh, that's right. yeah. if you're right. calling GFL. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah, they actually replaced one of the garbage cans. Right. They actually put one right. of mine on all their purpose, accidental, or however that works. But, we did that with us, too. Yeah, but mm -hmm. on top of Mike, and within two days, there's a new garbage can. So it's... That was uh, me, too. Yeah, they don't have a problem. I called Judy, and she called up, and they, they replaced right. my garbage. They said they put a broken one on the side, and they left a brand new green one, yeah. and because they blew the bottom out in the winter. It was so yeah. cold. That they broke in our garbage can. So we, yeah, we are one of the ones with one of the lime green garbage <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're causing the trouble. Yeah, it's your problem. <laughs> well, you right. did find me as soon as I right. called. Right. Right. Well, right. They, they, they pretty well handled it. 
this well, should be something. Call you. I just, no, call the village. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, either me or the village. The, um, the, we can hit that in the newsletter. Uh, when we changed uh, prior to Republic picking up our contract, we did a newsletter that had all the recycling standards in it, it was illustrated, it said hours, days of pickup, so that everybody got the same information and who to call. It had that number for Sunrise, but enough time has elapsed that we should probably do it again. The people and, uh, move. And that way everybody will be on the same page. And I'm sorry for any difficulties that have become, because mm -hmm. I was not aware of it. I yes. had not heard anything. Usually I hear something, but yeah. nothing. Just and it's strange that they're leaving you guys a hard oh, time. I always hear from you, Steve. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've been here all the time. I'm too nervous. Yeah. Yeah. They'll just take the yeah. cash and dump them in the room and read dump it. So yeah. they've been good on her. They've been really good. Yeah. 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 So. Right. If you if you call, you have to call. I call, but they never tell me to worry about it. Like, I mean, unfortunately, I probably call GFL, but usually when I call, oh, I call so you it, call Sunrise and Sunrise yeah. schedules it. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, most of the time, so, they're like, just leave it out there and they just pick it I up. So maybe you can get that when I do that. I got you. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's I don't have any problem. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Maybe there's a lot of confusion going on in Oxford with the odd jobs. Yeah. And that yeah. could be why they're saying you've got to have our stickers. Maybe they're not realizing the village like they are using the hands. I know Oxford's going to Right, they might not realize that. Right now. They might not. Right. Yeah. yeah. GFL may not. Right. Yeah. I'm. We don't have GFL. We use Sunrise. No, it comes well, through. The GFL trucks come through and pick up the trash. Okay, but. Sunrise is the That's correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because it's too hard for residents that have municipal service to have to go through too directly. It's not like you're a private. They have a word for it in the industry. You're a subscriber. If you're a subscriber, you're a person that pays your own garbage bill. If you're municipally covered, it's better if you call the municipality or and we work through a manager management company they have a different division for that so the communication does break down and i'm sorry to hear this i I've, I've been pretty happy with Man, the service is pretty good downtown <laughs> anyway yeah, yeah. So, and, and yeah. maybe they're not realizing we're just part of the village well, i will i will, I will absolutely i'll be i'll be talking to them tomorrow there's no doubt about it so you're going to call them i don't have to yeah i okay. will call them. so i know because no sense both of us do it. okay okay publish me that information i can put another page up on the website for Probably just a good idea. Wants to get big and pick up who to call mm -hmm. rather than great you know, idea. Stuff like that. So I, that should take. Yeah. <laughs> should have thought of that. Oh. Yeah, that would be. We can put that yeah. in the newsletter too. Okay, thanks, Alex. Yeah. I'll I'll get you what I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Shar. I would like recycling readdressed because we are being bombarded with stuff on TV, on Facebook. This one saying this is acceptable, another one saying no, that's not acceptable. And I know there are communities where they are refusing to pick up recycle because they say people are not recycling, recycling properly. So I think that it needs to be addressed again. We need a new sheet, what they are accepting so that we are doing it correctly, because I don't want to lose that service. Well, we're paying for that service. Oh, I understand. And because it's, because it is, and that's one of the benefits of a municipal contract is, is that the independent carriers like Oddjob and that drop in and out of the business, they do, most of them don't encourage recycling, because to them it's just a pain. But the big companies, like we're using, and because we're using the managing firm that we do, we they take our recycling goes but you're absolutely right we should refresh and make sure that everybody has the same information on what can be recycled and what can't because if we're doing it incorrectly and they're just yeah. throwing it away what yeah. have we accomplished yeah. and what are we paying for yeah, yeah. exactly and the township the township of emmett did exactly that 
they paid for recycling and they took that recycling and they put it straight in the trash, so they stopped it. Yeah. Because all that money was going for nothing. Well, and we have had that in the past too. But. Yeah, we did. <laughs> there was a period of time where we busted them mm -hmm. a couple of times. And if you get that update, I don't know. I'm sure that they can send us, that our manager will give us. Or even they have a link to what they're saying is acceptable. That way they can just go to one spot. Yeah. Phyllis yeah. has a question. Okay. All set for no, now? Phyllis has, has a question. Phyllis. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Phyllis. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, I just have a question about the recycling. We are now getting a regular garbage truck that they just throw it in the back of the garbage truck. It's not being like they used to. It used to be a side, a side carrier. Yeah. Well, it used to be different bins mm -hmm. that he would throw the things in. And now it's he would sort them while he was picking them up. Mm -hmm. Really? Before what I we see on TV. Before we went to GFL, that's how we did it. What I see on yes. TV is they showed this stuff recycling coming in on conveyors and they have people sorting as that's coming in on conveyors. Well because we have witnessed and this is Daniel and I were just sitting there talking the other day when they threw our recycles in the back of that garbage truck. We've witnessed the garbage trucks together throwing the recycles into the garbage truck that had just picked up our garbage. Yes, I, we did witness that. And we were tempted to follow this recycle truck and see if he did really go to the dump or where he really went. You should have marked up the recycle. Huh? You should have marked up the recycle. I know. So, I mean, are we recycling? Yeah, well, I don't want to be paying for recycling. If, if, we're not. if it's going to the dump. And I'm telling you, it is totally different now the way they're doing it. Okay. It's just like a garbage truck with a guy riding on the back and he throws it in the garbage truck, crushes it off, and it goes into the garbage. Right. It doesn't go into, it's all crushed in the garbage truck now. Got it, okay. And it just, it bothers me every time he picks my recycles up and I want to follow him to see where he goes. You should, you should video him. One of these days I'm going to. But I think Jamie at the township also mentioned follow it, you know, seeing their process to see how they handle everything to make sure that really is getting right because jane has recycle. watched that happen too yeah so she's been home whenever about. the village was getting the recycles picked up yeah. and they just throw them in the back of the garbage truck and then that thing comes down and smashes it how can they sort them when it's all smashed together and one big smash but like she said it conveyor if, if they had a conveyor system and we saw a bunch of people right, actually if they're all smashed in. Yeah, well, we just need to verify whether or not it's yeah. going to the dump or not. Yeah, because yes. we're paying for it, and I'm washing all my things out. Uh, uh, yeah. Just for the councils and the public's benefit, uh, my understanding is, is that Addison Township and Orient Township and Oxford Township are talking about putting together a uh, garbage, single, single vendor garbage mm -hmm. contract to cover all those communities. And I did talk to the supervisor about it and told him that, you know, we, how we do it and what we do. And he's very familiar with it because he knows the owner of Sunrise and they're, it looks like they're talking to Sunrise as well for this. Um, but I'll keep you posted it depending on how it goes. But I, I mean, I, if there's a, a, a cost advantage to get involved with that, I don't know why we wouldn't do it, mm -hmm. but it'll have they'll have to pull it off first. So, okay, anything else on that? If not, under old business, we have the sanitary sewer. Um, I guess at this point in time, the question has really become: um, Can we justify moving forward with a sewer study? given the information that we've obtained uh, both from the uh, department, U.S. Department of Agriculture and our engineers and our public surveys. So does the council wish to consider that question tonight or how do we want to proceed? I'll, I'd like to say I would really like to do this study, but I am really concerned that 
the costs are going to be prohibitive and that people are not going to want want it when they hear how much a sewer bill will cost. It's going to be a significant amount, especially for, as you heard at the last meeting, people on fixed incomes, et cetera. Even if we get them the help through grants to make the connection that doesn't cover their water bill, so to speak, or their sewer bill. So um, I think there's going to be a lot less support than we've seen. And if, if and allow me to remind you that we didn't have support for it, even with, you know, it, the numbers were against rather than for. Not by a wide margin, but, but they definitely were. I talked with Pauline down at the township about it, and she gave me numbers for a t couple systems in Oakland Township, Addison Township. And when I told her the numbers for here, she said, oh my gosh, that will be a huge financial burden for those people. So. Anybody else? Well, it, you know, it, it kind of makes you wonder if it was affordable, you would think villages like Hadley would have gone forward with it. And they did. And they've done the study and basically not done it because it's not affordable. Right. The, and it's $25,000 that we're going to have to scramble to come up with. Right. The, um, the cost aside, the even with forgiveness, even if we qualified for the 45% on the grant for the, for the cost, we, we're still talking a significant amount of money that is still gonna require recovery. Plus, we haven't even talked about the operating costs, et cetera, et cetera, management, um, operators, et cetera. We've talked about it, but I mean, we haven't sat and looked at the cost, the additional cost that. And when and we when were you, at that meeting in Lapeer and we talked with the, uh, Doug Skylas there, Mike asked him, if you were a business owner and you had a property such as the size of these here, could you build a system? And they said it could be done. So it would be very expensive, but it could be done. But it would be very expensive to have everybody else pay for these businesses to have the system as well. Yeah, the, it really does boil down to the number of users. Mm -hmm. Now, I think Hadley, they said there were 26. Mm -hmm. They tried to design a system for 26. Um, we, I would expect we'd have a few more than that if we did downtown, <laughs> but not a lot more. Mm -hmm. Um, and, 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 and then again, we're talking about forcing people to fix sidewalks. If we put a water line in and tell them they're going to force them to hook up to a, set, a sewer line, it's not going to be... Especially kinda, if they put the sidewalk in first and then have to redo yeah. it. <laughs> hey, that might be a way to get the sidewalks done. Yeah. Throw the cost the of the sidewalks done. in with the sewer. Yeah. So, anyway. Okay. Just a moment. Yeah. Just don't do this <laughs> okay. Are there any other council members that want to make a comment at this time? Or I guess I'm still of the opinion that if if we really want to know the true numbers of the cost, we have to move forward with the study. And I understand absolutely that's going to be a complete burden, and that other services will suffer. I know, you know, that's one of the main reasons I brought up the condition of the the plow truck. We do know that we have deficits in that area, but to truly understand what this system entails and what it would actually encompass, that's where that $25,000 would really go, is the understanding for the future, not necessarily just um, becoming a waste at that point. That being said, though, I also understand that our current situation is not great, and this may be something that maybe we're unfortunately tabling until next year when maybe we can put that in the budget plan for next year to make sure that we're accounting for that $25,000.
in the grand scheme of things, six months, eight months, a year, while it's you know inhibitive to some of the businesses and some of the residents that are really interested in seeing it, I think that it may be in the greater good for everybody to look at tabling. But I, I definitely think this is something we need to pursue. And it's just going to be a matter of time before we have more support for it. Um, uh, unfortunately, I, you know, our, our situation and our tax level is prohibitive to a lot of our residents as well. So. Mr. Well, Rathburn? Oh, I'm we, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Do we want to think about doing a special assessment for paying for the survey? That that could be thrown out on the table also. That's a good thought. But if you so, do that, do you have to get bids to and you could, could we get it cheaper than twenty five thousand? Well, if if the council decides to proceed, we would bid it out. But if we if we're not gonna proceed then there's no point. Yeah, at this point, I think the only motion we'd be able to make is to proceed because we wouldn't have a budget other than what uh, row engineering has quoted us. And if we have to go to three others, mm -hmm. I mean, we can't mm -hmm. proceed on one budget other than proceeding with the option to move forward, correct? Yeah, I did send a letter to uh, Mr. Korth at the uh, I always yeah, want to call on. it the Drain Commission. It's the Water Resources Commission, and I never got a response. I asked him about what they had quoted twenty-five to thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars ten, eleven years ago for that mm -hmm. study. Right. So I was curious to see if that price had moved, and I have not heard from them. So uh, I'll get back in touch. But either have, way, has the committee come up with any money, any donations? So my question is, would it be better for us just to go to the businesses here and talk with them to see if they'd be interested in just going for the study? Because let's say if we were to obtain X amount, it might be much lower than the 25 that the village would have to come up for for the residents. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, since it seems like the residents, which I understand, they also have a lot to gain from getting the sewer. But the main gain would be from our actual companies here, right? The business owners. Yeah. Um, and how much they would want. Because by them, then that expands their business as well. So maybe that's an avenue that needs to be. Yeah, we'd have to talk to legal counsel because even though they're different uses, I don't know how the costs are assessed. Like, unless they voluntarily contributed. I don't know that you could charge. No, I'm not saying charge them. I'm saying yes. go to them and just ask. But my next question would be, and maybe you can find out from legal counsel, if they were to donate it, could they use it as a tax write-off? I can find out. Sure. So I think That's if we could idea. do that and add that into our fact sheet, that okay. would help out a lot of people as well, residents and businesses. It, it can be actually. <coughs> deduction for them. So there's been no indication of any generous donors stepping up and giving the village money for a study? Well, I've been waiting to see what the village wanted to do. Well, that's not how we left it, Dave. Right. You were supposed to come up with money to help you do it. You said you were going to... Well, it wasn't okay. discussed. It was discussed when you were um, appointed to the committee. I'm not, not going to, I mean, I can ask people, but if we don't come up to 25000 then I'd like to see the village at some point here, like, like I just heard, put, put whatever's left in, in the budget for next year. That makes sense to me. Let's, let's mm -hmm. go, let's spend the rest of the year trying to get some money in there. If, if we don't get enough, then let's uh, put it on next year's budget. Uh, we, we, another thing is, you got to look further down the road. You're talking about senior citizens that won't be able to pay. Well, we're, we're not going to have sewers for at least 10 years. I don't think I'll be here to even see it happen. Um, but we need to go forward.
forward with it. The county is getting more stringent. I don't know if you study the health department changes in the law. They're pretty scary. They're going to go after us some, at some point. Um, I'd rather be ready for it than be shocked and find out that we have to do this now. It's happened two towns just east of here. They procrastinate. One ended up in the Michigan Supreme Court, and the, and the judge was so furious with, with the counsel that he said, you're putting in sewers no matter what it costs. He didn't care what it costs. He was furious hmm. with that. <laughs> and another town yeah, on to to said, oh, okay. we, we need to do it before we end up in yeah. I don't think we're going to get to that point because we're not all that important to them. Well, there are... There are um, mitigating circumstances in, in of those because they both involved water sh watersheds and right. water sources. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the actual pr uh, problems in the community, yeah. but it was adjacent to an area, so they were forced, yeah. to, that's why the courts forced them to do it. Correct. The health, it wasn't Smith's that the Creek. health department Smith's said you are you got to have a a system there there were other reasons for it. I don't think we're gonna So that's get to the that. whole story. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get to that but, but we should <clears throat> pursue it and see Well we, we have to we have to we have to look further down the road and just a few people that may not be able to pay it because I mean we might be twenty years before we who knows? Okay. You all set Dave? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Council? Any direction you want to formalize? I, I, I think I would like to try and make a motion to the table until, say, October, and then we bring it back up and discuss and the findings that we have or get any more information about it. And maybe if we want to maybe use your committee or start another committee for discussing stuff on the side, I think that would be something that would be um, in the best interest. We have support. I'll support that. Okay, there's been a motion to, technically it's set aside, but we'll say table of sanitary sewer consideration until October of 2019. Uh, a motion by Mr. Kennedy, supported by Mrs. Sotheby. Are there any questions on the motion? Can we just add that we'll table it to see how much money we've raised for the sewer study and that hopefully we can look at putting it in, in motion to put it, like if whatever is obtained that we can put it in the budget for next year. Okay. So that way we're very clear on what's going to happen in October. You agree with the amendment? 100%. Yes. Sure. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, tabling this matter until October 2019 at which time we will evaluate the budget and potential donations mm -hmm. uh, for performing the study. Right. Okay. And then you're going to find out from the attorney if it can be cast Right. Can this be put on a credit card? Credit card? What's a credit card? <laughs> if you've got one. Cash, cash on the bureau head. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, there's been a motion and a second. <laughs> Are there any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to table this matter, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. Show the record is all in favor. Okay, that concludes uh, the public business for the uh, village. The council is going to move into closed session for the purpose of consideration of a communication from the village legal counsel that is subject to attorney client privilege. Um, that said, um, if you want to remain to hear the rest of the meeting once we've come out of closed session, you're welcome to wait. If not, we will um, adjourn, sign, die, and move upstairs to may have our discussion. Um, in order to move into closed session, we have to um, Mike, before you move into closed session.
Yes. Could you say no? Um, she's here to talk about the summer festival committee and things. Could we run through those? Sure, yeah. And then I'm good close with that. the committee at the end? Yeah, said? okay. As long as everybody's okay with it, okay. we'll do that. Okay, so, so, so we want to go ahead uh, with the trustee committee reports, summer festival committee. Um, we're doing good. We've got a couple new members, a, a couple more new members. So we're doing good. Uh, we've got a wagon and the John Deere, but the John Deere is an older one and it's not as pretty. So if there's another option out there, the owner said he'd suggest he, his would be available, but he'd prefer if you got a pretty one. It might be better for the parade. <laughs> um, is the wagon, I mean, will they be able to get, will we be able to get them on the wagon? How do you want to do it? Is that um, just the toddlers? No, it's for the, the, um, the Grand Marshals. They always had a, did our tractors. And so somebody suggested at one of our meetings that, um, it would be kind of cool to have them riding in a way and pull behind the tractor. My question is, yeah. I mean, they're older people, so would we be able to get them up, up and down, you know, in and right. out of the wagon? It's a good question. I'm not sure how long. I guess we could be able to figure something out. I mean, we can take a little step ladder. Yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> Have to be a ramp. Maybe, have to some, be a maybe ramp. some cinder blocks, yeah. you know, built up something. Yeah. Walk up that See, that, that's my only thing that's bothering me. This suggestion I'm trying to, yeah. you know, get it for the, you know, trying right. to do it for them. It'd be just as awkward for a car, though. Well, not really. I guess they could get into the back seat of a car. Can right. Car they usually too. ride in my, um, in my hair. Yeah. And that's very easy to get into. It's that top down mm -hmm. and Dean puts like, no curtains in the back seat, so they're sitting up. They don't have to sit way down in the seat. So I'm just, I'm just tossed because this was brought up to me. And right. I would like to fulfill this, you know, but, and I talked to her about it, and. To Barb? Yeah. And she said, oh yeah, that would be kind of cool, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, but how am I going to do this? Hmm. No, we'll figure something out. Okay. Does somebody have a porch that you could back the wagon That's up to that they could get on the porch well, they're right and walk down by the church? Yeah, I wonder if Do we they could... get on like, the church steps in front? Yeah. yeah. yeah we'll and back up the trailer. I don't know. Do you need to use like, a hay wagon trailer or could you use a car trailer that has ramps so you can walk up? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That I never thought of. Uh, Would one of those hook to a, a tractor? Of sure. course. Yeah. You got a John Deere. No, that's fine. Well, the person that I'm thinking of um, who has some really nice tractors and we would like to have them in our parade is I talked to um, Kathy Comps, John Comps' wife, mm -hmm. and um, his dad lives on Rochester Road, and he's the one that has all those tractors out in front during the mm -hmm. summer. And, you know, they're lined up out there by Rochester Road. And those are all Masseys, though, aren't they? They're yeah. 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 But yeah. He's, a, he's a John Deere guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. So. I know. Now, I don't know what John has. I think he has a John Deere. I think John has yeah, does, I don't doesn't know. he? I know he's got that There's big, that articulated person. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I was thinking okay. that, yeah. too, when you said his name. Well, we'll work right, it out. We'll think about this. We got a backup plan right there. <laughs> and then we would have okay. to get a trailer. I don't know anybody with a car trailer, but we can look. I'm trying to figure that out. Like even a snowmobile trailer? Like a snowmobile trailer? I have awkward ramps. I've got a 14-foot utility trailer. That you know, work. can put a car on if you want. So, I mean, yeah. It would be lower and might be more stationary. I mean, more stable. Yeah, because I mean, they're going to have to sit in a chair or something. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to be able to sit in the trailer. Details, details. 
Okay. Yeah, it's something I need to yeah. we need to really work out because I'm not too sure about this yet. Okay. <laughs> you all set, yeah. Phyllis? Yeah. Okay. Cable Commission. Um, the only thing that's coming up is that, and I haven't heard anything from it, they're trying to set up a combined meeting of boards like Orion, Oxford, Addison, dealing with charter because um, when the contract was done five, six years ago, maybe a little bit more, the person that was in charge neglected to include all the fees in the contract and they have lost something like $4 million and they would like that money's back and of course Charter wouldn't, doesn't really, isn't happy to start sending it now. So the more entities they have combined, the more leverage they have. And um, so that's, and it's a matter of whether we hire the attorney that specializes in that field at $250 an hour or. That's standard attorney fee. Oh, I know, but mm -hmm. still, with, you start paying, he comes from mm -hmm. Dearborn or Southfield yeah. and you pay for when he leaves to when he gets mm -hmm. back. So anyway, um, I haven't heard anything new on that, but um, it's all these, the state is changing some of the rules. Snyder, uh, Governor Snyder, when he was in, changed some of these rules regarding how these fees would be paid. And so that's all part of this issue. Because always before when they had to bring lines into your community, they had to pay for that privilege and now the governor has changed it, had changed it to something that it's an in-kind service. You don't have to pay for that service. So I'm not sure how it's all going to settle out, but that is what they're struggling with. Because if they lose that money, um, what they get from Leonard won't make any difference. But Oxford Township, at Oxford Village, you're talking big bucks, and it will make a big difference. Okay, thank you. Uh, decorating committee? There's a meeting tomorrow. Okay. All right. North Oakland Transportation Authority. They bought one new, or they're replacing one, one old bus. Um, I think they've got 11 routes now. They're going to have 12. So it's moving right along. Seems to be fine. Planning Commission. I, I'm not aware of anything. So, motion to, uh, I'll make a motion to cancel the May Planning Commission meeting. We don't need that for adding a person? No, we need to get a couple more people on it. Because okay. there's only three right now. I don't even know if we get a quorum. The president can recommend and we vote. That's not right. okay. to the committee. Right. Gotcha. Anything else, Leslie? I'm good. I know. Okay. Huh? Is there a second? No, no, not yet. Is there a second then for the motion to cancel the Planning Commission meeting in May? I'll second that. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. Okay. Pontiac Trail Management Council. Big news is it is a pure Michigan trail. That was cool. It was nice. uh, one of the first trails in Michigan. There was, I think there's four or five others that were also given that designation, but there, it's a charter being the first, first time it's ever been done. And there were also a number of trail towns uh, uh, got that same recognition. So um, I got my eye on that one. I think that'd be nice for the village. It's not easy, but I think we can get there. Um, other than that, uh, they have a meeting this Wednesday. It's right here at Rowan Hall at three o'clock. Village Park. What do we got, Mike? I was in there Friday after I have a work day Sunday, better afternoons. Pretty wet. <laughs> I know. Yeah. London. All right. <coughs> You're kidding. <laughs> Oh, uh, the picture was so beautiful. Oh, 
uh, at the back or at the front? Yeah, at the front, right oh. after the Rochester. Wow. Hmm. So I was looking good. That's a lot of water. <laughs> yeah. So are we having a meeting Wednesday? I don't know, are we? Because that's what we talked about, having one after oh, that's this right. meeting. Yeah. Are you having the Whammers there Sunday? They're scheduled. I haven't heard from them, but yeah. if they come, we'll, I'll figure out something for them to do. If, if, even if they don't have boots. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll have the meeting. Okay. Wednesday at 7. seven. Okay, uh, council received the block grant uh, information in your packet, so that's covered. Um, real quickly for the president's report, uh, we had one Freedom of Information Act that's been covered. There have been no applications for uh, block grant from any resident. Uh, ordinance enforcement is ongoing with uh, 40, 40, 4582 Forest. Um, yeah, I they repaired the um, the front siding, but as far as everything else, they apparently don't feel they cut the grass, and that's that's all they've done. So they they did receive a notice to make those repairs, and also to inform them that before they can reopen, they're going to have to have a code inspection because of our new, our new code of ordinances. And I think that's one of the reasons that they were um, a little um, objectionable to, to the village when they were here last. Mm -hmm. So they did, uh, they did file a, uh, a report uh, a complaint filed against us uh, for a, an alleged violation of the Open Meetings Act. I have talked with uh, the Sheriff's Department and the, uh, uh, left a message for the Attorney Generals to see if there's any, but I've interviewed and uh, from what I understand from the Sheriff, there's, there is no, there's no violation. And uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Back to what was going on next door. He did pull uh, the ordinance regarding the uh, fence. Okay. So whether or not he's going to act upon it, but he did get the requirement. Okay. Um, the uh, the council members received an update on the code of ordinances for your. You know, unfortunately, they didn't put the holes in the. It's a, for a three ring binder, but uh, for the fireworks and for the medical or for the uh, marijuana. And then finally, we did get a bid from a road commission for striping the roads. They want 10 cents a foot for yellow and 15 cents a foot for white. So we've already got a contract for eight cents a foot. So I think we'll just stick with what we've been going with. And that's all I have. Which we might, that reminds me, we need to contact them and tell them which yeah. roads we need stripes so yeah. and what we're doing with them. Okay. We'll do. That's it for me. Is there anything else besides our closed meeting? Okay. Okay. You're welcome to stay we while we meet. Upstairs. Yeah. What, no. To no. No. Close no. The but we aren't yeah. coming back to have any more meetings, right? right? Yeah. So we, we have to reopen the regular meeting and then close and officially. Oh, okay. Or, or leave. So uh, at this time, uh, we need a motion to go into closed session for the purpose of consideration of the village legal counsel communication that is subject to attorney-client privilege. I so make that move. I need a roll call vote, please. President McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Sotheby? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mrs. Arendale? Yes. Mrs. Swift? Yes. Okay. Since we're on camera, let's uh, have a motion to close, close, close session. 
and go into open session then. I make a motion, we go out of closed session and back into open session. And I second that. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Okay, council, uh, we've left uh, closed session and we are in open session now. Are there any uh, further consideration by the council on any matter that's come before it tonight? If none, a motion to adjourn would be in order. And motion to be adjourned. Second. All in favor of the motion to adjourn, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, mm -hmm. please say no. Thank you for your patience tonight. I know I.